are right here with Scott Redler of T3 Trading. And he says the market has already priced in this chance of default in Greece. I want to get to Greece in a minute, but I want to talk about gold first, Scott, because last week you said sell gold. And I'm sure there were tons of people out there who disagreed with you, but you were right. So what made you sell gold? Well, the trade was just getting very crowded. And we've been gold bulls ever since 2008 when it was at 850. We said it can go to about 1500. And this year, our target was 17 to 1800. But then the, the trade was just too crowded. We didn't say sell everything, but get down to a comfortable size where you're not involved or you're not chasing excitement. So the range got choppy. Things, you know, the dollar started to strengthen. So it made sense to lighten up in your gold position. But now gold's going to get interesting again. It just got thrown out the window. It's down about $300 from the highs. At the 200-day moving average, I think that's a spot that if you wanted to enter gold and you didn't chase it up at 1850 or 1880, you could buy some around 1530 to 1550, but just buy a small amount because these violent trades could actually go a bit lower. So let's link together what's going on with gold with what's going on in the rest of the world because as we know gold is often used as a trade as a safety trade safe haven trade. How much are these levels in gold linked to what's going on right now in Europe. Well, well unfortunately investors thought they were safe in gold. They thought they could buy gold it can go up silver can go up they thought they could buy the Swiss franc it can go up and right now investors are losing those safety vehicles. So the, 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 the life preserver they thought they had there is now gone. So at this particular point, we're in a very dangerous time because even the pros don't know exactly what the wind up in Greece is going to be or in Europe is going to be. So what I'm doing is I'm watching the markets and I have a big support level between 1101 and 1120 on the S&P. I'm going to try and be long, small versus that level, but I think there's a very high probability we break that level once we start getting some more bad news out of Europe. And they say that then we get that hard default, which I think happens in Greece. And then I think they're going to start talking, obviously, Italy and Spain. And I think that ultimately we can get down to 1030 to 1050 in the S&P and maybe 96 to 9800 in the Dow. I think if this break's going to happen, it's going to happen in the next four to seven sessions. Oh, wow. So it's going to be pretty quick. I, what do you make, though? I mean, the ECB just out with headlines this morning saying, listen, they're considering these covered bond purchases. They're considering additional monetary easing. It does seem as if the leaders are taking a few more steps towards a commitment to finding a solution. You say no. They're trying to put, you're trying to solve a, a problem with fire with more fire. And they're actually putting a little gasoline on the fire because the, the longer they put off the inevitable, the more money they can have on the hook. Now, if you've read some of the reports in Italy or in Greece, a lot of the deposits have gone down by 20 to 30 percent. That means that smart money is leaving. So they're saying, OK, I don't want to be stuck into default and, and get my money taken going to the drachma or whatever. And the ECB is buying the bonds, so they're getting more on the hook. So the more they get on the hook and put off the inevitable, the worse this crack could be. That's why it's a very dangerous time for investors. And this is a time that they have to preserve capital because if we get this next move lower, it's going to happen fast. And if they're prepared with cash, there'll be great opportunities on the buy side because equities longer term will be OK. But short term, there's going to be a lot of volatility. All right, Scott, I just have to keep sort of playing devil advocate, right? So I'm going to be the optimist to your pessimist or maybe realist point of view, if you want to call it that. One of the ESFS is expanded. Right now, it's like 440 billion euro. What if it goes to 2 trillion? What if there is this quadrupling? <laughs> Do you think that makes a difference? Does that change your outlook? Well, look what happened with the banks, okay, in the U.S. They came and they saved the banks. Every strong bank has now turned into a uh, a normal mid mediocre to bad bank. At one time, Bank of America was strong before they bought Countrywise and they bought Merrill, which they could have waited and got out of bankruptcy. So now the strong countries are trying to bail out the weaker countries, same way prime and subprime loans were packaged as one vehicle and rated AAA. So right now, how could that happen here with these 17 nations if they keep just trying to prop them up? There's going to be problems down the road. It might be a small band-aid. We might get a bounce in the market. That's why I'm following the technicals. So I would say if, if it does save the day. Weed out the noise, basically. Exactly, and there's a lot of it. So I would say be lightly invested. If you sold the strength above 1,300 in the S&P, you sold when we broke 1,250, you could get into a tier one approach long in the 1,100 to 1,120 area in the S&P. But just be prepared that if this doesn't work, we're going to make another leg lower. And instead of running for the hills, you just use it as a buying opportunity. But right now, don't go all in. Oh. All right, Scott. Very good advice. Well thought out. Thanks for sharing uh, the thought process with us. Scott Reller joining us here.